Hey everyone, I'm Colleen DeLong and I teach the high school and young adult Sunday school class. Today we're going to be looking at Acts 24. And if you're someone who likes movies about famous courtroom battles and dramas, then Acts 24 is going to appeal to you because it's about a court case and it's filled with tension and lies and powerful men who are deciding the fate of an innocent man whose own people have turned against him. Now we learned in the chapter before this that Paul was transported from Jerusalem to Caesarea under the cover of darkness by a Roman guard because the Jews wanted to kill him. But as a Roman citizen, they had an obligation to protect Paul and to allow him to stand trial uh, before the governor in Caesarea. The governor's name was Felix. Now who was Felix? Felix was actually a former slave and he and his brother both had earned their freedom and had worked their way up into influential households in Rome. And his brother actually worked for the Emperor Claudius and he talked Claudius into appointing his brother to be the governor of Judea and Samaria. Now Felix was married three different times and the first two times he was actually married to someone with the same name, Drusella. And so it's the second Drusella that uh, he is married to during the course of this particular scene. And the interesting thing is that Drusella was already married, but when Felix saw her, he had to have her. She was married to a Syrian king since the age of 14. She was apparently very young and very beautiful. And so Felix talked her into divorcing her husband and marrying him instead which she did. That gives you a little insight into the character that Felix had here. Now, at the beginning of this court case, Tertullian is the lawyer for those accusing Paul, and he stands up and uses the first lie of the court. He basically says in verse two, he says, uh, we have enjoyed a long period of peace under you, most excellent Felix. Now, either you can call that a lie or just extreme flattery, but Felix's rule was known to be anything but peaceful. In fact, he was known to be ruthless and cruel, and he would resort to extreme measures to keep order in his kingdom. So imagine coming and standing trial before such a cruel man. A brave man would have been shaking in his boots. And so the accusers come forward, and they were actually the high priest and elders from Jerusalem, and they brought three charges against Paul. And if you read along in verse 5, it looks, sounds like this. These are their charges. We have found this man to be a troublemaker, stirring up riots among the Jews all over the world. He is a ringleader of the Nazarene sect, and he even tried to desecrate the temple. So we seized him. And then Paul has a chance to defend himself. And he does it very straightforward and logically. One by one, he addresses the charges and basically shows how they were baseless and that uh, he was not stirring up um, any crowds in the temple or on the streets and that he was a follower of the way, which was the way they described the followers of Jesus. And he basically said, I worship the same God that these accusers do, which was a very clever tactic. And in terms of desecrating the temple, Paul said, I was ceremonially clean when I entered the temple and I went there to deliver gifts to the poor. And I didn't um, argue with anybody there or outside of the temple. So the charges from what Paul was saying were baseless and the people who accused him of those things were actually not even present. So Felix listened to the things that Paul said and he decided to delay making a decision on his case. And so he put him in a jail there in Caesarea. Then a few days later, he actually calls for Paul again and asks him to come and talk to he and his wife, Drusella. And it's this part of the story that I find most inspiring because see, this is Paul's second chance to actually uh, get free he has a chance to uh, try and show that he's innocent and that the charges were baseless and, um, and that he needs to be free. But that's not what Paul does. 
Paul uses this opportunity to actually address Felix's sinful behavior instead. So he talks about righteousness to a man who's known for his cruelty and corruption. He talks about self-control to a man who's living in adultery. He talks about the coming judgment to a man who liked to live by his own set of rules. And I, I'm just amazed at Paul's tremendous courage and boldness. Uh, I mean, if he had angered Felix, it would have been an automatic death sentence for him. But that's the most beautiful thing about Paul, is that he cared more about the truth and the eternal soul of his executioner more than his own life. He knew that this was a second chance to win Felix to Christ. And that meant more to him than trying to save his own skin. I find that amazing. Paul was so, um, so focused, his heart and his mind on eternity, that his own life actually wasn't, wasn't the first thing that he, would, that he tried to argue for. Now, what happened? Did Felix actually um, convert? Well, we see in verse 25, it says, that after listening to him, Felix said, it says that Felix was afraid. And he said, that's enough for now. You may leave, and when I find it more convenient, I will send for you. Felix obviously found it um, painful to listen to Paul. And he actually was afraid, which meant he was convicted enough to feel the fear. But he, um, he didn't want to change. He didn't want to change his lifestyle and lose his position, and, and uh, he liked being his own master. You know, maybe he'd think about it tomorrow, or next month, or the next time he had a new wife, which he did go on to have another one. Felix kept Paul in prison for two years, and he would call for him uh, from time to time and listen to him and talk to him, and uh, Scriptures indicate that he was waiting for a bribe in order to release Paul, but Paul never offered one. And when Felix finally got called back to Rome, he left Paul in prison and uh, as a gift or a concession to the Jews. Felix never found a convenient time to decide on Paul's case. And as far as we know, he never found a convenient time to decide for Christ either. It's very easy to look down at Felix and criticize him. But, you know, there's a lot of Felixes out there today. A lot of people that are waiting for a more convenient time to consider the claims of Christ. And a lot of people who would prefer a more convenient Christianity, one that doesn't require a change in their behavior. But we never know when it's going to be too late. And so I hope that uh, all of you listening take every opportunity to make a decision to follow Christ. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, uh, we thank you for the example of Paul and his bold witness for the truth. I pray that you would help us to be single-minded like he was, Lord, and the gift of being able to even uh, read about these accounts. I just thank you for your word. And Lord, there's many hurting in Nova Scotia right now. I just pray that you would come near to them, that you would comfort them, and that you would demonstrate, Lord, your great love for each of them. In Jesus' name, amen.